Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Washington, D.C. at the offices of the Halifax International Security Forum, one of the world's most important security gatherings out in Halifax in Nova Scotia, Canada, that starts on the weekend before Thanksgiving, full year of planning. And we're talking to Peter Van Praag, who is uh, the man, uh, the myth, and the legend who makes this happen every year, Peter. Uh, your 10th anniversary. Uh, I know I was there from the second uh, onwards, and it's, it's really an extraordinary event. Talk to us a little bit about the theme this year. You know, we've, we've had so much change in the security environment. It's the 100th anniversary commemoration of the end of World War I. So many different factors coming in, Trumpism. Talk to us a little bit about what um, the, the mission, the themes, and the topics for this year's conference are going to be. Vago, it's great to have you here. And I have to tell you, I really appreciate talking to you every year. I appreciate uh, your being at the forum every year. And indeed, you've become a fixture at the forum. So thanks so much for being there every year. It's an honor. Um, so Halifax International Security Forum, as you've noted, um, takes place the weekend before Thanksgiving every year. This is our 10th edition. What makes Halifax a little bit different is that it's really for like-minded democracies only. So we have representatives from over 70 countries, um, but people who all share values. Um, they might have disagreements about how we get to a final, um, to end a, a, a problem or a crisis, but everybody has the same idea about working together and building um, stronger democracies that lead to economic opportunity and, and lasting peace. So this year, as you mentioned, is uh, the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I to the month, uh, November 1918, and now we're in November 2018. And, and what we're asking ourselves this year is, as a community of democracies, are we tired of winning? Do we have what it takes to keep going? There has been an incredible winning streak for a century. World War I, of course, we thought at the time that that might be the end of war altogether. We thought the same thing after the end of the Cold War in 1989. Of course, after World War I, we had World War II, and after 1989, we have terrorism and all sorts of crises that we're dealing with now. But as a community of democracies led by the United States of America, do we have what it takes to keep going? I, of course, believe the answer is yes, but it, it requires work, it requires concentration, and it requires talking and listening to each other. Um, it's always a star-studded uh, national security cast. Uh, you guys have an incredible blend of um, some folks who've retired but are still giants in the field, as well as very current folks uh, who are going to be some of the highlight speakers. I know that we, the, I think it's pretty safe to say the senior Canadian leadership will be there. Um, yes, the Canadians will be there, uh, of course. The Minister of uh, National Defense of Canada, the Chief of Def uh, Har uh, Minister Harjit Sajjan, um, the Chief of Defense Staff of Canada, uh, General Vance. Uh, but in many ways, even though this event takes place in Canada, you're talking to me from our headquarters here in DuPont Circle, Washington, D.C. And in many ways, this is the American Security Conference. In fact, more senior Americans travel to Halifax, Canada for this security event than any other security conference, be it in the United States or internationally. So this year, from the United States, and why is that? Um, before I tell you who all is coming, I'll tell you that uh, the world does need American leadership. Um, and um, I think everybody, it's, it's two years now that it will be two years since uh, President Trump's um, election, 2016, will be one week uh, from the um, midterm elections. And I think everybody wants to understand still um, what American leadership is all about uh, at this time. Um, so from the United States, we will have senior military leadership. Um, the delegation uh, from the Pentagon this year were quite um, thrilled uh, to tell you that General Dunford, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, will be coming. Um, and that's the first time we've had a chairman of the Joint Chiefs. So that's really exciting for us. And he'll be talking um, globally as well. Even though we're on the coast of the Atlantic, the North Atlantic, this is a global event, and so we have Admiral Davidson coming, the commander um, of Indo-PACOM, traveling from Hawaii to be with us to talk about issues related to uh, Indo-Asia uh, Pacific region. Um, and also we have uh, Admiral Carlo uh, Schultz, the head of the United States Coast Guard, uh, with us this year as well. So that's, uh, we're really proud to have all of them with us. As well, um, we will have an incredible congressional delegation this year. Um, led by Senators Jean Shaheen and uh, Senator Tillis of North Carolina. Um, we have um, 
more than 10% of the United States Senate is going to be with us in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which again um, demonstrates not only the significance of Halifax as a meeting place, but the significance of American leadership in the world. So we're thrilled to welcome them all. Um, and I think just by being all together, Americans, Canadians, um, but fr from so many countries, democracies, shared values, we are demonstrating to the world and to those who would challenge us that no, we're not tired of winning, that there's still a lot of winning left to do. Um, um, uh, Senator McCain was um, always uh, a very important part uh, of the forum. Uh, he um, took the time to talk to just about everybody who was there, because everybody, uh, you always had a few minutes for everybody there. Um, Cindy McCain is going to be there. Uh, you have a new award to honor him. Um, talk to us a little bit about John McCain's shadow and who the first uh, winner of the McCain Prize is going to be. Yeah, thank you, Vago. Um, I mean, truth is, I feel very honored and privileged um, to have known Senator McCain. Uh, I knew him uh, prior to the forum. Um, he did call me friend, uh, and that was always, it always uh, made me feel incredibly proud um, uh, just when he used that word um, but also to see him at the forum every year um, was something that was always a highlight for us and yes he will be missed um, Senator McCain really stood for what I believe is what's best in America and uh, and that is um, you know strength democracy um, dignity understanding the need that um, for every individual in the world needs dignity and um, we're going to miss him this year. Um, we're very grateful to Mrs. Cindy McCain who will be with us this year to present the first John McCain Prize for Leadership in Public Service and this is a prize that is being awarded at Halifax International Security Forum but in fact awarded um, by the McCain family and it is going the first inaugural prize will be going to the people of Lesbos, Greece and that is Mrs. McCain highlighting um, the refugee crisis and the outstanding and heroic efforts of the people of Lesbos to welcome people to their community. Um, and this goes back now uh, many years um, when there are flooded uh, refugees coming across. So this is something that's going to be a highlight. We have people coming from Lesbos, the community, who are going to be telling their stories. And I think Mrs. McCain is quite, um, you know, it's important to her that uh, th this refugee crisis is something that's highlighted as a security at a security event um, because it really matters to all of us. Um, one of the things that makes um, Halifax unique is this cross-cutting everything from you know hard power is discussed to women's issues to migration to technology the nexus the small dinners uh, that that uh, that happen on Saturday night are always a highlight because you end up learning about something you didn't think you would even be that interested? I mean, I know there are people who are like, oh, God, you know, I got such and such dinner because I didn't get into that dinner. And everybody walks away from it being like, wow, I mean, this was just such a great conversation, uh, whatever the topic's been about. Um, it is, but increasingly over time, right, there's a lot of nuance, there's a lot of span, and yet it seems like the public discourse has descended into very much more simplistic uh, solutions to what are complicated uh, problems. What are some ways of maybe changing, right? I mean, you're somebody who, who plays very significantly in the discourse simply by how you architect each one of these discussions and conferences. What are some ways to change the global conversation on some of these complicated problems, whether it's on climate, whether it's on migration, whether it's on technology, and whether it's on security or even economy, uh, economics, which at the end of the day can potentially avert crisis, right? I mean, I was at, we were at the forum when uh, John Allen, you know, introduced the idea of the Marshall Plan from yeah. the, for the Middle East in order to be able to get to some of these fundamental uh, issues. There are folks who look at that template and model that we pioneered after World War II to look at Central America and say, hey, look, if we did a Mar Marshall Plan, right. we could solve some of these underlying challenges or at least get get a good get a leg up on them. How do you think the discourse has to change? Vago, this is uh, not only a good question, it's the fundamental question uh, of this year and maybe even our time. Um, this is a community of democracies. And so the military leaders there, um, the experts, the elected officials, um, and the senior officials, they do have bosses um, uh, other than the people down the hall from them. The bosses of the people of their countries. 
And I think that that is something that actually needs to be remembered. There are a lot of legislators. There are going to be a lot of legislators from many countries at Halifax um, this year. And one of the messages, I think, is that, yes, you are leaders, um, but you need to communicate because we can't, as leaders, do what we want. I think that we have found that out, that the people of all of our countries um, do have expectations. One of their expectations is to understand what their leaders are doing. Um, and so I think fundamentally um, the challenge at Halifax, but not just at Halifax, just in the day-to-day -day conversation, is to explain to the people of, of our democratic countries why the decisions that are being made are being made, why these challenges are important to them and to their children and to their families and what we're doing about them, what leaders are doing about them. And I think uh, understanding that um, and not just making decisions in a vacuum and thinking that that's okay, because it's not, it's, it's no longer okay. I think that, that one of the lessons of the last few years is, is that better communications with our populations and with our communities is not only um, welcome, it's, it's fundamentally needed because democracy requires it and, and the people of our countries, everybody who's represented at Halifax, um, are really thirsty to understand what's going on. Um, so I think that really is part of the conversation uh, this year. I think everybody wants to be included. Um, this is not a conversation that is exclusive to experts. It's not a conversation that it, that's exclusive to the military. It's a conversation that really affects everybody. And so all of our panels, um, our plenary panels, are available online, and we really encourage people to go to our website, halifaxtheforum.org, to watch uh, the sessions as they go forward. Well, it's going to be uh, an honor and a pleasure to be covering it and to attend. Now I have to ask you the big question, is everything totally ready? Hotel does such a terrific job, but I know that your staff has been running almost 24-7 to get everything uh, ready. Hundreds of participants from all around the world. How close are you to being totally ready? We're ready. <laughs> Vago, we're ready. And you've been there before, so you know, you know, what it, you know all the different moving parts. Um, but part of Part of what we do, aside from the conversations, is we, we build an atmosphere um, so that people who don't know each other um, get a chance to meet each other, and, and within minutes, there's a warm relationship building. So we're ready. We've got a fantastic team. I'm proud of all of them, and I'm um, uh, really looking forward to welcoming you back to Halifax. Um, it's, it's always an honor and a pleasure, like I said. Uh, very much looking forward to seeing there. It, it, it definitely sets your intellectual needles for the, for the coming year, Peter. Thanks very much. Best of luck, and look forward to seeing you and your team up there. Thank you so much, Vaga. Thank you.